Huck and I set off for the BWCA, the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness, where there are over a million acres of untouched wilderness, lakes, rivers, and rugged portages waiting. Our plan was to follow the Iron Lake Loop, a seven-day loop that would take us from Mudrow Lake to the Canadian border along Iron and Crooked Lakes before looping back to Mudrow. The trip promised tough portages, peaceful paddling, and incredible views, even when we took a few wrong turns along the way. Our adventure started early on Tuesday at the popular Mudrow Lake entry point. The goal for day one was to paddle north and make camp at either Four Town or Boot Lakes. After a few hours of paddling and portaging, we covered about six miles and found a perfect campsite on Boot Lake. This is where we portage. first taste of portaging came right away with a decent carry just to get the canoe into the water near Mudrow Lake. From there we tackled several more portages on the way to Fortown, the longest being a solid 125 rods. The final stretch was easier, a 43 rod portage brought us into Boot Lake. We decided to camp there for the night. All told the journey took us about 4 or 5 hours, but we weren't really rushing. With all our gear and food for the week, our packs were heavy, so we took our time enjoying the journey. We arrived at Boot Lake early enough to enjoy the rest of the afternoon. With the warm weather, we cooled off with a swim. The water was refreshing, though not as cold as it will be once fall and winter set in. Afterward, we relaxed by the lake, took in the scenery, read for a bit, and cooked up a hearty dinner before settling in for the night. It was the perfect start to our journey. We woke up to the sight of an otter swimming around the lake, definitely not a bad way to start the day. After a quick breakfast, we packed up and set out, heading further north toward Bear Trap Lake. The route would take us through Ferry, Gun, Gull, Mudhole, and Thunder Lakes, covering over five miles and six portages along the way. I bet it's that right there. 
I, isn't that a, pay, a trail there on the left? With our packs still heavy from a week's worth of food, the portages were a workout. Thankfully, some were short, just 6 and 19 rods, and the longest was only 60 rods. We made it a habit to start early each day, usually within an hour of sunrise. The mornings offered calm, glassy water, perfect for smooth paddling. As the day heated up, the wind would pick up too, often making the lakes choppier. So getting on the water helped us avoid the rougher conditions and the unseasonably warm afternoon sun. Mud, mud hole lake. Where do we go? I feel like a hobbit carrying everything on my back. It took us about five hours to reach Bear Trap Lake. We were pacing ourselves for the longer days ahead. Bear Trap would be our base for the night, allowing us to set up and prepare for the more ambitious paddle, the Iron Lake, planned for the next day. Big rock. We knew day three would be one of the toughest legs of the trip. We had around nine miles ahead of us, heading north to Iron Lake, and no designated campsites between Bear Trap Lake and Iron Lake. Man, we definitely see where that river probably goes out of there. The day started with our longest portage yet, a hefty 204 rods from Bear Trap Lake to the Bear Trap River. We navigated the first two days smoothly, and maybe we got a little overconfident. Not long after getting onto the Bear Trap River, we made a critical mistake and turned south onto Spring Creek, completely missing the fact that we were supposed to be heading north. It might seem like an obvious error, especially since we were going upstream instead of downstream. But in this part of the river, there's almost no noticeable current. Also, 
Spring Creek looked clear and traveled while Bear Trap was filled with lily pads and kind of appeared to be a dead end. Huck even pointed out that the first beaver dam we encountered, we went down. Soon we were hauling the canoe up beaver dams. A good sign we were going the wrong way, but we kept going instead of stopping and reassessing. Perhaps I was so focused on overcoming the obstacles that I missed the bigger picture. It wasn't until I looked at the sun and realized it was on my left that the alarm bells started going off saying, hey, we're going south instead of north. At that point, we had already gone a few miles in the wrong direction. Another reason we should have noticed sooner, the next landmark after the initial portage was supposed to be another portage within a mile. The fact that we hadn't hit it within 30 minutes or so should have tipped us off, but I must not have looked at the map close enough. By the time we realized our mistake, we were already several miles off course. Thankfully, we did eventually realize our mistake, pulled out the Avenza app to confirm where we were, and sure enough, we'd taken Spring Creek south. Having that backup was a relief, especially when you're off track in such a remote area. We retraced our route, now a little frustrated, but at least back on course. Instead of reaching Iron Lake in the early afternoon as planned, we didn't arrive until evening, just as the sun was starting to set, and that's when the stress set in again. Iron Lake was packed with other campers, most of them fishing. We checked six different campsites only to find them all occupied. It's crazy to think we hadn't seen another soul all day long and then you get to a lake where every campsite is taken. And the last thing we wanted was to be paddling around a large lake in the dark, scrambling for a place to set up camp. Luckily we found a place to camp just in time, but it was a close call. It was a hard lesson staying aware of your surroundings, no matter how focused you are on the immediate challenges in front of you. After the stress of getting off track and the effort it took just to reach Iron Lake, we were more than ready for an easy day. It might be only six inches, but still it's up. I gotta walk, I'd much rather walk that other one than this. Don't you? That's got a lot more power and swiftness. We gotta go up rocks. 
going to have to step out. Iron Lake bustling with campers, we decided to move on to Crooked Lake and find a better place to camp. Our route to Crooked Lake involved just one portage, 140 rod carry, but it was a memorable one as it brought us right up close to Curtin Falls, an impressive sight. After the portage, we had a short paddle to a great campsite. The day was all about slowing down, relaxing by the water, soaking in the peace and beauty of the wilderness after the challenges of the previous day. Crooked Lake is enormous with many islands and bays to explore. Our goal for the day was to paddle to Friday Bay, located on the eastern end of the lake. Though there were no portages, we had around seven miles of paddling ahead of us, which took us about three hours. So we don't want to get too close. I don't know if your baby's going to fly yet. The paddle was amazing, as we generally followed the path of the international border between the U.S. and Canada. The water was calm and the scenery was beautiful. It was one of those days where the miles just melted away. You know it's your favorite slanted slip drop. After two easier days, we were ready for a big push south to start making our way back to Mudro Lake and home. The day's route took us through smaller lakes like Papoose, Chippewa, Nikki, and Wagash before reaching more familiar waters, Gun, Ferry, Boot, and finally Four Town Lakes. This lake covered about 10 miles and tackled seven portages, including the longest of the trip, a 300 rod march. I think this is it. I thought you were pointing at a beater. Very shortly, we should hit a three rod portage. Let's scare all the beaver away. 
Here Lars goes on his 300 rod portage. Up until this point, we had been making two trips every portage. But with most of our food now eaten and our packs much lighter, we were able to complete portages in single trips, allowing us to move much faster. This change of pace made a huge difference and we managed to reach Four Town Lake in about five or six hours. Fairy Lake. Portages, while tough, gave us a chance to appreciate the smaller lakes and their beauty. The weather was perfect once again and we were lucky enough to experience the boundary waters without the usual onslaught of mosquitoes and flies, thanks to the cool evenings and a frost that hit before we arrived. Sunscreen was a must to avoid getting burned, but we never had to reach for the bug spray. The final day of our trip was kind of bittersweet as we retraced our route from Four Town Lake back to Mudra where it all began. With only a few short portages ahead of us, our beautiful adventure was coming to an end. Even in this short leg, we got some excitement. We had to get off the water briefly to wait out a small thunderstorm that rolled through, bringing a bit of thunder and lightning. The lightning was disconcerting, but it was beautiful watching the storm move by. Iron Lake Loop is a beautiful yet challenging route, covering nearly 50 miles or more if you happen to get off track like we did. I recommend it for experienced paddlers. Know your limits, be prepared for the challenges it brings. We were fortunate with incredible weather and almost no rain, which made the journey easier. The difficulty level could rise significantly with heavy rain, swarms of bugs, or colder weather. After seven days of paddling, portaging, and navigating in the wilderness, sometimes in the wrong direction, we finally reached Mud Row Lake and completed the journey. It was a trip filled with stunning views, physical challenges, and memorable moments. By the time we portaged back to the car, we really appreciated our Boundary Waters adventure.